So we're just gonna go straight at it. That's the first question. How I got into comics. Um, from my early childhood, I always remember the Luke Ferrigno, um, Hulk, Incredible Hulk, um, TV series, and uh, I always remember the Super Friends uh, way back in the days. I've always loved uh, Christopher Reeve's uh, Superman. I grew up on that. Uh, putting a towel around your neck and kind of uh, jumping off the roof of your house. Uh, so I was always a comic book fan um, growing up. Um, Love Spider-Man. Uh, didn't know about, you know, a lot of characters. I just knew about the basic character, Spider-Man, you know, Aqu Aquaman, Batman. Um, <clears throat> growing up, Superman was uh, probably between one and until the... Probably from one until probably about four, Superman was like the favorite hero. Uh, but I more um, started to go towards Batman, especially when the 1989 movie came out with uh, Tim Burton. See, so yeah, when the 1989 movie came out, it was just all about Batman. It was like nobody else. Of course, you liked the Adam West back in the day, the Bam, Ram, thank you, ma'am, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but definitely the 1989. Tim Burton took the movie industry and just tore it up. I mean, he did Beetlejuice. He did uh, Edward Scissorhands. Uh, you know, him and Danny Elfman, they did like fantastic job. Uh, but even before Batman um, 89 came out, my first introduction to rabid comic book fandom or just fandom period uh, was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Nothing was bigger than the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm such a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan to this day. Um, I remember just wanting to be in the sewers with them and just uh, loving them. But yeah, those were the hero worship uh, when I was younger. Allow my sex fingers to interrupt your video. Here's some of my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collection. You know, you have Volume 1, IDW, Volume 2, IDW, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, number eight, number nine, number ten. Then you also got Transformers. Like, who wasn't a big fan of Transformers? G.I. Joe, He-Man, stuff like that growing up. I mean, that was your basic, you know, love affair for Saturdays. And then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and He-Man came on during the day, also G.I. Joe. So very cool. Um, but what really got me into comic books was the um, comic book cards. Uh, 1991 uh, comic book cards. So I was at this skater rink and uh, skating rink, and um, I said, you know, what's the store over here? You know, what's this? So I go in the store and um, you know, I see comic books on the wall, and and then I see, you know, he's like, uh, the guy's like, hey, you know, say so here's these cards, you know, maybe you can learn a little bit about the heroes. So why did he do that? That started, I was already a hero person. My mom loved Star Trek. She was a sci-fi nerd. She's not like that anymore. I mean, she watches, you know, Green Arrow, Blue Lightning, but she's not such an avid sci-fi fan, but my mom was a sci-fi fan. So she kind of, she credits this, all this for her. You know, she, she's, she's like, oh, I, you know, I was a big fan. But um, when I saw the 1991 cards and I started collecting them, I found every reason to always go to that skating rink, which was Hot Wheels in Miami. If you know, if you're from Miami, you know Hot Wheels or you know Thunder Wheels or whatever. 
Uh, but once I got those cards in my hands, it just began a whole bunch of knowledge. And I started being able to pronounce bigger words because comic books had, comic books back then had words that you were just like, like look at the character uh, Annihilus. I used to call him Anahalis because I couldn't pronounce that word when I was that young. Uh, but uh, yeah, Annihilus, you know, just big over the top speeches in comic books back then. If you watch some of the X-Men and their dialect back in 1992 and 1991, it was like pages just filled with words and you had to really, really learn how to read and pronounce your vocabulary. So I credit comics for giving me, you know, kind of like a bigger vocabulary. But the 1991 cards, I was flipping through, I remember one time, and then I ran across this one card which changed my life. <laughs> oh man, here they go right here, man. This is what did it for me when I was uh, younger. In 1991, uh, the comic cards. There it is. First time I saw this Wolverine, I was like, you know, wow. And the crazy thing about this Wolverine is that it's uh, from the old school, the first time Toy Biz uh, released the X-Men. So that's the original card. Here's another Wolverine that, you know, I remember seeing this card and I was just like, wow. And then, um, you know, I saw the patch card, which definitely made it, made me more of a rabbit fan when I saw the patch card. Here it is, that's the patch card. Wolverine known as Patch, Medrapore. But this is what started it all. I still have all my original uh, comic cards. And uh, definitely these and the WWE uh, made me see how the Warriors just like this wild man, like just beast of a man. So that's what really got me into comics, you know, being a big wrestling fan when I was younger and falling in love with Wolverine and the comic cars of 1991. Um, that one car was Wolverine. Like there'd be the blue and uh, the blue and yellow suit, blue and brown suit, or the patch uh, card. I was hooked. I mean, I was hooked. Here it is, one of the best heroes I've ever seen, live and in color. And you know who he reminded me a lot of? He reminded me a lot, and it might sound funny, but he reminded me a lot of Ultimate Warrior because the Ultimate Warrior was this over top wrestler, big muscles from the wild side, just a crazy animal. And that's what Wolverine was. And growing up uh, in my house, WWF was really big when we were younger. We really, really loved WWF. I remember one time we went to, uh, we went to like uh, somewhere with my dad in uh, like one of his friends' house. And uh, they put on wrestling, but it was WCW. And I was like, Ugh, what is this? Then I saw Sting. I was like, wow, Sting looks a lot like the Ultimate Warrior. Not knowing in my younger days, I wasn't a, I was a huge wrestling fan, but I didn't know a lot about it. Uh, Sting and uh, Ultimate Warrior were partners. Um, tag team partners that just so happened to split off and go to different companies. But uh, I definitely was a big fan of Hogan growing up. I was a big fan of the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, and that all bled off into my... Uh, love of uh, comic books because wrestling and comics actually go hand in hand. Matter of fact, well, Ultimate Warrior had a comic book uh, later on in life. Um, but definitely, I, I, I was a big, still am, huge fan of Wolverine. If Wolverine's right here, the only other hero that's anywhere next to him is Batman. I mean, Batman is on his heels because, like I said, the 1989 movie. And then, you know, I want to get ahead of myself. But then when you fast forward to Heath Ledger, let's just pause on that. So, yeah, here's my uh, one of my favorite Heath Ledger uh, posters. This is like my theater or movie room. There's another Heath Ledger. Of course, you got to have Harley Quinn. You know, I got all my Jokers and Harley Quinn. You know, I got some more Harley Quinn on the other side of the dungeon. You know, I've just always been a huge Joker fan, uh, especially Heath Ledger. Uh, I think he did the Joker of Justice. Yeah. 
just awesome. Yeah. Gone too soon. The best Joker there is. When you get to Heath Ledger's Joker, he took the foundation of what Jack Nicholson did and took it to a whole nother level. I mean, just beautiful, beautifully done, just awesome. Like, I don't think any other Joker would ever top Heath Ledger's Joker. And it's not because his timely, untimely pass, passing. It's because that Joker will never be touched. So, um, yeah, man, Heath Ledger, man. Then the X-Men movies, you know, they were uh, pretty popular. I am a huge X-Men fan. Uh, my heroes go from Wolverine, Batman, favorite two. My favorite villains are the Joker and Apocalypse. And uh, growing up in like the 90s, it was nothing hotter than X-Men. Nothing even touching it for me. I didn't read Avengers. I didn't read Captain America. I might have had a couple of comics, uh, but primarily I was an X head. That was it. X Men, X Force, some of the New Mutants, but mostly X Men, X Force, X Factor. You know, I was just a huge X Men fan. And it's crazy because I became a fan like one year before the cartoon hit. And when the cartoon hit, it was just over because everybody was X-Men fans there. But it still wasn't the big end thing. You still was considered, you know, a, a, a major nerd if you uh, were into comics. So, yeah, um, along with comics, you know, that's not my only thing. Um, I was really, really, really into uh, sci-fi movies um, growing up. You know, nothing was bigger than RoboCop, Total Recall, um... Predator, which is my favorite franchise of all time. A lot of people love Aliens, and I do love Aliens, but Predators are, that's that's the beginning and the end for me as far as uh, sci-fi is growing up. So I was a huge sci-fi fan too. And you can't really bring up sci-fi without giving it to the godfather of sci-fi, which is Star Wars. So it's funny about Star Wars because when I was growing up, I knew some of the characters. Um... But probably, like, when I got in my 20s, like, almost, yeah, 20s. When I was in my 20s, one of my friends said, man, I never knew a huge Star Wars fan of you. I was like, what? You know, I, I know about Star Wars, but I don't know that much. I know Chewbacca and Han Solo. But then it dawned on me, I'm a huge uh, Star Wars fan. And so, you know, in my love for Marvel Comics, I was like, there's still more universes out there, so I got involved in the Star Wars universe. Why did I do that? So you got characters like Boba Fett, which is the Mandalorian. You got characters like, you know, Yoda. You got characters like uh, Darth Krayt. You got characters like Darth Malgus. You know, you got characters that's just out of this world. Like my favorite. Okay, I got favorite Sith and Sith Lords. Sith are Sith are basically the bad or the the guys that rule the dark side. I'm not gonna lie, my, my favorite Sith is Darth Sidious of all time. You know, that's the one in the movies or whatever. But then you got Darth Vader, who's the power, the backing. But then when you go into the history of Star Wars and the, the myths and the legends and all this kind of stuff, you get into this guy called Darth Malgus. So he called Darth Malgus the Butcher. Uh, which I really, really love him. Like I said, he's a first Darth Vader, um, as far as I'm concerned. You know, you have uh, Darth Vader, but then, you know, Darth Malgus was the first one. So we're doing the timeline of the comic books and, you know, my love for the industry and my love for collecting. So you get around to, you know, me always loving the X-Men. And uh, I went from buying, uh, what do you call it, back issues, um, when I was younger and I used to always tease one of my partners. He was, I was like, what is that that you're buying? He was like, it's a, it's a graphic novel. And I was like, graphic novel? I was like, why are you buying these books when the single issues are more, uh, um, when the single issues are worth more? He was like, oh man, you, you just don't know, Fred, like these are, you know, uh, better because you get the whole story. And I used to be like, it's cheating. So I tease him a lot, uh, comic book window, you know, I mean, if you're, uh, you know, 
uh, familiar with me. Uh, but comic book window was like, oh man, you know, I bought a graphic novel and I don't have to, you know, uh, go to the shelf every, you know, uh, week like you guys got to, and you know, I'm, I don't miss a title. And at the time, I was like, that's kind of cheating, and you know, I kind of, you know, laughed at them. But then I got older and I started realizing hey, there's this thing called Amazon out there. Hey, Amazon sells, you know, the graphic novel, and hey, you know, the comic book shop is so far away from me. You know, it's almost like. 45 minutes away from me, so I just started buying graphic novels. So my graphic novel collection is stupid ridiculous, you know. It's not as big as some people's, but it is big, you know. So we're down here in the dungeon. This is the second part of uh, the dungeon. This is my garage, and this is some of my comic book collection. You know, those are my comic books. I got them filed nice and neat. Uh, you got your graphic novels right there. This is most of my graphic novels. One, two, three, four, five, six totes, uh, which is pretty much a good amount. If I put them at bookshelves, it'll probably take three of them. And as you go across the garage, here's some more of my comic book collection. So that's, uh, will be, you know, to complete my comic book collection. So you got like one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, tw 12 trunks. And, uh, just to show you some of the comic books, these are some of them. This is the one right here. This started it all. This is my first comic book that I bought. Of course, I had to rebuy it or whatever, but this is uh, one of my first comic books. So, yeah. Definitely love Wolverine. Uh, learned a lot of them through Marvel Comic Presents. You know? Uh... Here's some of my graphic novels, just to kind of uh, go into them. I put them in this plastic because they're in, you know, um, a garage, which is, you know, not, uh, which is basically exposed to, you know, the air. So you got a couple dead pools, you know what I'm saying? Just cool stuff. Cool stuff, cool stuff. There you go. You know, X-Force, huge X-Men fan. Like, most of my graphic novels are going to be X-Men, but then, you know, I got a couple different ones, um, like, you know, Scar, King of the Savage Land, you know? So, I try to diversify myself on not just X-Men, but, you know, some other stuff, especially like Superman, Batman. I got a bunch of Batman stuff, but it's in the, it's in the trunk um, under this one. See, like Avengers, so... Pretty cool. Oh, I was waiting for you to ask that question. Uh, what's some of the key issues I have down here in the dungeon? Um, off the top of my head, I can say that I have um, X-Men number one, which is, you know, my introduction, not introduction to Jim Lee, but that's when Jim Lee kind of uh, blew up. So definitely X-Men number one. Uh, you have X-Men number, no, 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 not X-Men, I'm sorry, X-Factor, uh, number five and six, which is the first cameo of Apocalypse, which is number five, and then you have the first full appearance on the front cover, which is, uh, uh Apocalypse. So that's Apocalypse, uh, cameo, and that's Apocalypse, first appearance on uh, X-Factor number five and six. So I definitely have them down here in the dungeon, in the um, comic book part of the dungeon, in the garage. I'm also very proud to own um, two copies of Spawn number one. Actually, when it got, uh, I had Spawn number two for a while, uh, but that didn't survive my childhood because I reread re it over and over again. Uh, but around the time where uh, we hit the recession during uh, the Bush administration, when we hit the recession, I went to a comic book store and I found like so many key issues for like uh, 25 cents or 50 cents. I remember I found uh, two copies of Spawn number two, I meant number one, and I also found uh, a copy of uh, X-Factor number two? Is it X-Factor number two? Because that's the second appearance of uh, Deadpool. So, X-Force number two. So, I found the second appearance of uh, 
Deadpool. But yeah, I'm a proud owner of uh, two copies of Spawn number one. So, um, you know, I love the Joker, but Bane is like, Tom Hardy made Bane everything to me. You know, I really never appreciated the character until uh, Tom Hardy played him. And when Tom Hardy played him, like, for a while, I was like, you know, he couldn't touch Heath Ledger's Joker. But when I took another look at the movie, I saw the Bane character for what he was. And he's a, he's basically the strength of Batman, you know, if not anything else. He's just like uh, Bruce Wayne. He's just uh, born different. You know, Bruce Wayne was born in wealth. He was born in poverty. Uh, but they have a similar backstory. Um, so I was very happy when I was in Second and Charles and I was digging through the crates or digging through the comics and I found The Vengeance of Bane, um, which is the first appearance of Bane. And I found it for no more than $2. Uh, so another one that I have down here in the dungeon I showed you kind of already. It's in a graphic novel form is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 44, uh, which is considered the death of Donatello. Uh, but we actually found out he got transferred into the uh, metal organic body of Metalhead. Um, but for a while, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 44, the death of Donatello was a pretty hot book. So I definitely uh, like to diversify and I definitely like to have different key issues and that's one of the more recent key issues that was very very hot which was uh ninja turtles um number 44 the death of donatello so man if you really want to see one of my favorite covers of all time it's definitely x-men number uh 268 i believe it's with uh wolverine captain america and black widow and they actually did a, a piece of it in the X-Men cartoon series later on, like in series number five or six, where Wolverine tees up with Captain America. But um, it's one of the earlier Jim Lee drawings, and uh, Jim Lee was such a jewel uh, in 1992. Matter of fact, uh, besides Adam Hughes, uh, right behind Adam Hughes is uh, Jim Lee. Uh, different artists I like, Jim Lee, uh, David Finch, um, Arthur a Arthur Adams, of course, uh, Adam Hughes. I'm a huge Adam Hughes fan. Uh, J. Scott Campbell, nah. I uh, definitely love people like uh, Francisco Martina, um, you know, people like that I definitely love. I I I'll actually think Terry Dotson and Rachel Dotson are pretty cool artists. They, they uh, you know, bring fun back to comics, but uh, definitely Jim Lee. I uh, know I said David Finch. Uh, gotta have Olivetti in there. Uh, Ariel Olivetti. Definitely gotta have um, Clayton Crane. And there's one more that's on the top of my head that I can't get. Uh, it's, a, it's like a French name, but I, I'll, I'll remember his name uh, later on in the video and I'll definitely tell you. Uh, but uh, yeah, those are some of my favorite artists. Definitely Jim Lee and Adam Hughes at the top of the list because they are awesome. Rob Liefeld, you definitely can't leave out Todd McFarlane. <laughs> Come on, man. Todd McFarlane, Spider-Man, and Spawn is just second to none. But definitely X-Men number, uh, I think it is Uncanny X-Men number 268. Uh, one of my favorite covers of all time, you know? All right, so let's keep going. Okay, I could go on the key issues in my collection forever, but the last one I'm gonna give you is Batman number 43, which is the uh, first appearance of a character called Mr. Bloom. Uh, Mr. Bloom is very uh, creepy looking, uh, but definitely Batman number 43, because I actually was looking for the first appearance of Mr. Bloom. Couldn't find it for almost like a year and a half. And then I went on vacation and I just end up finding it after that, boom after boom. I think I got like, Three appearances of Mr. Bloom, I might have give, given one away, but that's uh, definitely uh, uh, Capullo. Uh, is it Greg Capullo? Uh, Greg Capullo. Uh, and I was surprised, I was surprised to find out, uh, you know, I thought Greg Capullo started, you know, his career on the Batman, but when I went back and looked at some of my old comics, I definitely saw that Greg Capullo has been in the game uh, for a minute. So, uh, pretty cool. 
uh, Court of Owls. First, I had the first appearance of Talon, but definitely the first appearance of that skinny new character, Mr. Bloom. Let's look at it. Yeah, so that's what we're going to leave it off at. Um, we're going to leave it off at the, the key issues that I have in my collection. Uh, this is going to be like almost like a four-part series. So uh, number two is going to come pretty soon. I got some time off, so I got plenty of time to record. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is one of the longest videos I've ever done. Um, you know, and uh, just thank you for tuning in. Uh, you know, the channel is Fred Hall Direct Edition. I always like to end my videos with uh, a little bit of a blessing. So, where's the wisdom? Focus on the ones that show you love and on the ones that don't show you love. Hey, we're just going to keep our world up without them. Uh, man, my hat's off to you guys. I, I love all you guys. I love you guys' channels. You guys keep me inspired. Love to see a collection. But like I said, this is not going to be the last video. We're going to keep on going. We're going to make a four-part series. So, be safe out there.